discuss that in this theorem. It's actually a theorem only talking about countable unions, countable sets, but that is something I want to come back to. Okay? But another objection might be that you know, maybe, the num maybe a particular number or a particular object here lives in many sets. So I would have a listing, but it would, it would list maybe some things many times, which is not what I want. So what can I do? Yes, Bonnie. Okay, and what did we do with the rationals? Okay, that's good. That's one way to think about it. If something is in the set already, you skip over it. Another way to think about it is you could just show that this is true for any array and then remember the theorem that says the countable subset of a countable set must be countable. Then you'd be done, right? So if you just look at all the things here, some of them are repeated more than once, but if you take a subset where everything's only chosen once, it's still countable. Are you with me? So this is enough to show that uh, this set can be listed. So the union of A sub I, where I goes from 1, 2, and this is the way you normally write a, uni a countable union. Uh, this is also countable, which I've abbreviated countable. Okay. This is countable. This un countable union, countable sets is countable. Now, uh, I want to point out that whenever you're talking about an arbitrary union that is not necessarily countable, we use a different notation. Okay? So uh, notation. We'll use the union of, okay, suppose you have a bunch of things. Now, if the index, if, if the thing that you're, if, if, if the, the, the collection is uncountable, you can't use whole numbers as an index because that would make the reader think that you're talking about what? A countable collection. So if you want to refer to something that's not necessarily countable, uh, the traditional way to do that is to give the subscript usually alpha or a Greek letter, and then you union over all alpha in some, some index set. So here, uh, J is an index set. So what did it use? Use this for uh, possibly uncountable collection. Oh, I didn't define that word yet. OK, possibly, um, well, OK, I'll define it in just a second. Possibly uncountable collection. OK, here J is a, an index set. That's the set of all things that you're going to sum over in some sense. Index, take the index from. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. What else did I want to mention? Uh, there was a question here about well, what about if one of these sets is finite? Well, what could you do? Well, you could imagine if, let's say, the, some of these sets are finite. Well, then this thing just terminates. Right? But if it terminates, you can think of it as like an empty block. And uh, what you're looking again at is the, a subset <coughs> consisting of the non-empty blocks of an array that is countable. Right? So in fact, this theorem is also true if you replace all the words countable here by at most countable, where at most countable includes being finite. Okay? So you want to take the finite union of countable sets, that's still countable or finite. Right? Or the finite union of finite sets is finite. Right. Okay. So um, that is also true as well. Okay. Um, let's see. What's another thing I want to point out? Oh, this is amazing. This theorem is amazing. <laughs> That's the other thing I want to point out. Why is it amazing? Why is it amazing? Just, just take a look at this. Let's see. Um, example. The uh, set of, uh, let's see, computer programs that you could possibly write. Let's see, the set of computer programs. That's, you know, you give me a computer program. What is a program? How do you normally code up a program? You code it up using some language, right? Which consists of letters or symbols, right? Yes? Oh, and what do you do with those symbols? You string them along together, right? OK. So a program you could think of as a collection of symbols, right? 
Each program is a collection of symbols. How many symbols? Well, a particular program has how many symbols in it? <laughs> Finally, many symbols, and each of those each of those symbols could have how many possibilities? Finitely. Finitely many, if it's an alphabet of some kind, right? So, so the uh, um, yeah. So each program is finite. Uh, it, what about the collection of, uh, of all computer programs? Okay, it's the union of all zero character programs, one character programs, two character programs. How many two character programs are there? Only finitely many, right? Right? Yeah, finitely <laughs> many. That's right, because if there's the alphabet as 26 letters, for instance, then it'd be 26 squared such programs, right? Or what it, not, not, ev not all of those will be real programs, so it's a subset. Are you with me? So in fact, what we have here is a set of computer programs is finite. Would you agree? Uh, not finite. Uh, countable. At most countable, anyways. But it, w it, won't, it won't be finite because you actually have infinitely many. I mean, each of the, the lengths is a particular. There, there, uh, there are countably many unions, and they're not empty. So uh, what, you'll know, what you know is this is countable. Why is that an amazing fact? Well, it's. You know, it's something you might observe. But check this out. What did we show last time? What did we show about the, the size of R? It's infinite. It's not countable. So R is not countable. And so now I'll define this word, which you already guessed. We say it's uncountable. And uh, so the definition of uncountable means it's not finite, it's infinite, and not countable. <laughs> Just what you would expect. Okay. R is uncountable, yet the set of computer programs is countable. So do you know what this means? It means that there are some real numbers that can never be the output of a computer program. Right? So let's call a real number computable if, through some algorithm, you can compute its decimal expansion up to a specified number of places. Right? It, you, know, you input the number k, and, and the program outputs the k places of the real number. That's one of these computer programs. Right? So what that means is there are some real numbers that are not computable. You'll never. You, there, there are some real numbers that you cannot be the output of, that cannot be the output of a computer program. So, amazing fact: you can just deduce just by this argument. There are real numbers that are not computable. So this is the term here: not computable. So that means. Um, uh, a computable number is one where the input is a number of decimal places and the output is all the decimal, uh, the decimal expansion up to k places. Means um, uh, it can't be specified to uh, arbitrary precision. What? Really? That's an insight we get from mathematics that would not be possible almost. Uh, just by thinking about this directly, right? A about computer programs, right? Interesting. Really interesting. Uh, on your homework, you're asked to show, oh, uh, that uh, the set of algebraic numbers is, uh, com uh, al uh, is countable, right? Algebraic numbers means what? Those are anything that could appear as the root of a, um, of a, poly of a polynomial integer coefficient. Right? And you use a very similar method, right? You think about, okay, well, let's see, what, what kind of polynomials could I have? Well, those are specified by the coefficients. How long could the polynomial be? Well, it could be, you know, have many, 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 many terms with finitely many terms. Okay? And the homework